What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to mount accessories and lights to a full face mask system. Now, the, the system that I'm using today for this video, of course, is my personal one. It may be a little bit different for you based off whatever type of system if you got, if you got a different manufacturer. But I wanna show you just how uh, innovative you can be when you mount lights and cameras and all that. We are gonna be focusing on these two lights in particular because of the mount system that we're using, but you can pretty much do this with any type of system. Of course, I'm using the Ocean Reef G-Divers. This is my personal mask here. I do have the extender frame on here, which makes it very easy to mount things such as cameras and lights and everything else. Uh, and a couple other accessories. Of course, I've got my comm units. You guys know that I do a ton of public safety diving, a ton of salvage diving, and having a comm unit on here makes it very easy for me to communicate diver to diver and, of course, diver to surface. But moving up here to the lights, as you can see, I've got two different lights, or actually they're the same light. I've got the uh, Comfort Zone Scuba Little Powerhouse here, and I've also got another Comfort Zone Scuba Little Powerhouse. And the mount that I've got actually allows me to swivel these lights. And one thing I want to talk about is I recently took off these two. These are by a company called Aquatech, and these are absolutely great lights to use for a full face mask if you're doing a lot of search and recovery diving. Now, the only problem I had with these is they wasn't very bright, but now when I mounted them to my mask, they were absolutely perfect, say, if you was doing some type of underwater criminal investigation because the light beam itself gave you just enough to be able to search in this distance. So if you're searching, you know, right up close and personal for small items, these absolutely work great. And I'm actually gonna be putting these on just my, my traditional mask as well. But I needed something a little bit more powerful, so that's why I switched out for the Comfort Zone Scuba Little Powerhouse. Um, I will be making a separate video on these lights, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. But what I'll tell you is I'm getting around five to 700 lumens, depending on what battery I use, and they'll absolutely cut through anything out there. So like I said, stay tuned for a separate video on them. But I want to show you just how easy it is to mount these lights. I've got a separate full face mask here. This is one of our other public safety divers that we're actually setting the mask up for him. We've already got the extender frame on it. He does have a comm unit, even though it's not on here yet. Uh, he's got a camera mount up here. Now he uses the GoPro system. Um, he does have another a little accessory port here for a light, but we're actually not gonna be using that because I'm gonna show you with the extender frame and with his light, which is very similar to the one I'm using, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to mount it to the extender frame itself. A couple of the items that you're going to need, of course, is your light of choice. Um, drill, you got to have some type of power drill. I've got two bits here. This is an eighth inch uh, bit here. And this one, to be honest, I'm not sure what size it is, but it's a little bit larger than the eighth inch. We're going to be using this for a pilot hole. And then, of course, this is going to be the hole uh, or the size of the hole that we need. Now, I do want to show you that I just simply use zip ties versus using some type of rivet system. Now rivet systems are gonna be a little bit more secure, but I wanted the option to actually be able to disconnect or cut the zip ties off and remove the light or move it up and down the frame if I needed to. So that's why I use zip ties over rivets. But of course you're gonna need zip ties and preferably black. You know, get the same color that you got for your extender frame. This just happens to be the only ones I've got here. But to start with, you're gonna take your light and I'm just gonna pull the light here out of a pair of pliers. I'm just going to pull the light itself out of the frame and it's just held in real simple with an o-ring here because I don't need the light itself to mount the frame. So I'm going to pull the light out. All I need is the bracket itself and make sure you don't lose your little o-ring here. And I'm going to position it on the mask where the diver has asked me to position it. And basically all I'm doing is I want to try to be able to line it up with the angle of the visor itself. So if I got it mounted there and simply turn, you'll see that the light itself will actually line up with the visor itself. So that's going to give you that perfect angle, if you will. But if you need to look up, down, whatnot, you can angle it in any way. Now, once I've got it on there, I want to make sure that it's flat and that there's no obstructions getting in the way, and I've got it pushed all the way through. Now, I do want to be cautious of the skirt here, because when I go to drill through the plastic, I don't want to actually catch the skirt itself. But I'm going to start with a smaller bit here, and I'm going to just create a little pilot hole. So let me get my bit in here. And anytime you do this, I do have my drill on the lowest setting possible, because I don't, I don't need it to drill too fast, and I want to be able to do it 
and control it to where I'm not actually cutting through the skirt. So all I'm gonna do is put two little tiny pilot holes here at the back, and I'm gonna kinda turn this little swivel so it's not my way. I'm gonna keep my fingers out of the way, and I'm actually holding the skirt down so I don't poke a hole through the skirt itself. And I'm gonna make sure I get plenty of room here for expansion when I use the larger bit. And I'm just gonna start out slow. I'm gonna create a little pilot hole. So it pokes all the way through. Pull the bit back out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and change this bit out to get the larger one. All right. And then I'm gonna continue to enlarge that hole for the zip tie or whatever rivet that you'll be using. Like I said, go slow because you don't wanna hit the skirt behind it. Just like that. I'm just gonna take my finger and clean it up. If you need to, you can take a little knife and just scratch it to clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna take one of my zip ties I'm going to push it through, making sure not to poke the skirt on the other end. Okay, and you can make this as tight as you want. I would suggest getting, say, a zip tie tool where you can actually cinch it down. But just for video purposes, I'm just going to tighten it up there. And then you need some type of little cutter. We're just going to cut the excess off. Just like that. And of course, you can get in there a little bit closer and... Get all the little nicks, that way you don't catch your finger, your gloves on it if you're doing a, a mass drill or some type. And that's essentially secure, but we need to add one more up top. I'm gonna go ahead and change my bit out again. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing here in this top portion. And like I said, when you make your pilot hole, you wanna make sure that you leave plenty of room in this area for that hole to expand because you don't want the hole to come off to the end so i'm gonna create a pilot hole giving it plenty of room to expand once again holding the skirt back just go slow once it pokes through go ahead and pull your drill bit back out you don't have to sit there and just keep wallering it out that's why we do a pilot hole first go to the larger bit We're going to go through and enlarge that hole. Just like that. Pull our drill bit back out. Once again, kind of clean it up. Get the little shards of plastic out of the way. And if you need to, you can come back here with a knife and just kind of smooth that up if you need to. All right. Now I'm going to take another zip tie. Once again, you can do this with rivets. The reason I'm using zip ties on ours is because for maintenance purposes or whatnot, or if we need to adjust or move the light, I wanna be able to move it wherever we need it. So we're making it pretty much to where we can detach it at any time. And then, of course, you're gonna lose your zip tie when you do that, but zip ties are relatively inexpensive. And they should really be in every diver's save a dive kit anyway. So clean that one up a little bit. Okay, make sure it's good and secure. I can push backwards, it's not gonna come off in any way. It's nice and secure. Now I can actually take his light, add his light back to it. Okay, pull up on the O-ring, secure it. And now, underwater, as he goes to turn this on, he can actually angle it to meet the visor frame itself or the, the visor lens. And he can, if he needs to angle it up, he can. If he needs to angle it down, whatnot. So when he's communicating with another diver, say if I'm looking at you, obviously the light's gonna be shining at the diver. All I've gotta do is angle it down and then I can key up on my comms and talk to you. And then once I look away, I can angle it back up and that way I'm not blinding the diver during communications. Even if that diver doesn't have a communication system such as his mask there, I can simply angle the lights down we can actually talk. A lot of you guys that dive a full face mask, you'll understand it's a large enough airspace that if I get close enough to that diver, since sound travels four times faster underwater, I can actually communicate with him just simply by getting close. But yet in this position, I'm not actually blinding him. As I look away, I can simply turn the lights back up. And of course, I'm not gonna be blinding the diver as I swim off. But guys, I just wanted to show you that's how simple it is to mount accessories and lights 
to your full face mask. Now, if you got a different manufacturer, it may be a little bit different for you, but with the Ocean Reef series of masks and with the extender frame, it makes it very easy attaching accessories. So I wanted to show you that real quick. And it really doesn't matter what type of lights you use. Uh, you guys have seen the video in the past of these and how I just basically zip tied them to the frame. And they work good, but I needed a little bit extra power. That's why I switched to those. And like I said, stay tuned. I will be making a separate review video of the little powerhouse from Comfort Zone Scuba. Uh, I've actually had these lights for about a month now and just now getting to where I can install them on the mask itself. But guys, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. If you like this video, share it with your friends and your family and other divers out there and also hit that like button for me. But guys, I really appreciate you watching. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.